Thank you, Andy, very much. Um, this is uh, an exciting campaign, and we're talking about the 400th anniversary of the grandfathers of all treaties, the two world wampum. Um, our next speaker is from the Onondaga Nation. He sits on the Council of Chiefs of the Onondaga Nation for the Eel Clan, and I am honored to present to you Chief Jake Edwards. Jake. Still on a wind down from this New York City traffic, I just concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I had a real good time though. <laughs> <laughs> on the west side instead of the east side. <laughs> <laughs> we got through. We had to show them a thing or two on how to get through their own city. So we're talking about the two row wampum anniversary coming up. I'm going to put out a greetings to all of you. I see some familiar faces and some not so familiar faces, but greetings to everyone. 400 years ago, 299 years ago, we had a runner come to Onondaga explaining to us that these people that are that were coming through our forest looking for help how to survive in the forest are, looks like they're here to stay. And they're doing a lot of work in the woods. And some of the woods are disappearing fast. And so they sent a runner to Onondaga to inform us that we should have a meeting, a discussion about these people. It was the Dutch traders, they were on their little trade ships, trade boats. And Mohawk people were talking with them and, and dealing with them and they were informing us that they need, a, need to be spoken to from the whole confederacy. And so we summoned a meeting, everybody from each nation, the leaders from each nation all sat down and talked about this and how we're going to work with these people because we know now, we know them from years before. But now we know and understand that they're not leaving. They're staying here. They're not just here to tra pick up trade items and take back and bring us some trade items. Notice they're here to stay, so there's some laws already established if you're going to stay in the forest here. And one of the main laws is the natural laws. Is our mother's rule. Mother Earth has laws that we must abide by. And so we share that with them. We didn't turn them away, we put our hands out to them to offer what bounties lie in the forest that help us survive. And so in the discussions there we say that there's um, an agreement between our people that we extend our hands and our arms out to, to your people and share this agreement with you guys, the understanding of the formation of the Haudenosaunee people of the Longhouse, Five Nation Confederacy, Iroquois Confederacy. I don't know if we have a photograph of the belt. Do we on um, the formation of our league? We're instructed of the laws to abide by as we walk about here on earth. And so we share those with the, the newcomers to the land. Well, the formation of our league begins thousand, perhaps two thousand years ago. It's not when we begin, but the unity of our people, of one mind, one body, one heart, came to be. And we accepted the great law of peace. The great law of peace, the main principles of that is, just what it's saying in English anyways, is the peace. Peace, love, caring, honor, respect, and the forest that your Mother Earth provides for us to survive. And so all these natural laws are put into a discussion 
with the newcomers on their trade. And so we came up with a, an agreement with them, the two row wampum, two rows, just like what Andy was explaining, one row where it represents the boat or the trade vessel, one row what represents the canoe, which our people travel side by each with the boat down the river of life for as long as grass grows green sun rises in the east sets in the west and as long as the water flows downhill those are still in effect so this treaty is still in effect between our peoples and so we have this agreement, mutual understanding, and the basic of this law is the natural laws of our Mother Earth. In order for us to survive for years and years, and generations and generations to come, we must first honor and respect what provides for us best. And that's our Mother. She provides all we need survive. And so this is shared with the new people. They're old people. They're probably just as old as us, but new to our world. And so we come up with this agreement explaining to them when they first start doing trade with the Mohawks. The Mohawks explain to them that we'll tie your ship. We see you're not going back and forth as often, you're setting up the president, so we'll tie your ship to the forest here. And then on further talk and further watching these people and helping these people, we said, let's get more involved here, so we should tie your ship to, to the rock, which is to unite us. On our unity belt, confederacy belt, Hiawatha belt, great law of peace strung together 2,000 years ago or so in which we still have in our possession the original at home in Onondaga that became our flag and I was asking for a photo I have no photo in there and bring a belt we bring the bell, the actual bell, but we do have the Hiawatha bell, but it's known as also. And in, in the middle of it is the great tree of peace. The tree of peace was planted. Yeah, here's part of it. I think this was taken to New York City. But here's our bell, which became our flag because we were playing in. Well, here's the team. There's the. Nationals, Iroquois Nationals. Okay, international <laughs> lacrosse. We're sharing our game with them. And when we first start going over and playing lacrosse, everybody had a flag. All the other nations that were playing had a flag representing themselves. And they asked our people, where's your flag? So well, we don't. We don't have a flag, because we know who we are. <laughs> people you're playing don't know who you are. They know at the end of the game. <laughs> so in a serious discussion, we had to come up with a flag, and we, the heads got together, and wondering how, what kind of flag, what kind of design are we going to put on our flag? So our leaders decided that uh, what best is the unity bell of the Badinoshone. So that's our flag now. So, starting from the east is the, uh, the Mohawk Nation. Next to them, the United Nation. In the center, fire keepers, wampum keepers. The capital is the Onondaga Nation, where the Tree of Peace is planted. The Cayuga Nation, a little further to the west, the Seneca Nation. Throughout the times of uh, working this two-row wampum with the people who are traveling about through our forest. Some troubles that came up, of course, we all know that. They taught us in history class in school.
rule. And so the Tuscaroras are reaching out and following the white roots of peace. They're looking for protection because that's what peace gives you, is protection, peace of mind, contentment. And so because our law is open to all, seek shelter and peace, they come and ask for some shelter. This was in the 1600s also. 1713, 16, somewhere from there maybe. And so they come up and they became the Sixth Nation. There was a whole bunch of others that came under for shelter also. Along the east, all the way over to the Mississippi, all the way down to the Carolinas. Is where our our hands and our arms have reached out and accepted others who will accept peace. And some of our people that accepted it are right next door to us. Noon, Syracuse guys. They're looking for peace. The Syracuse Peace Council. Yeah, those are good work, good hard workers right there. They're looking for the same thing, and they were welcomed in our hands and our arms also with their hard work and it's so um, so comforting at first it was so scary you got some people offering their help again so we were kind of skittish about it Still a little skittish. <laughs> but we've been working along with them. They've been working along with us. We've been traveling together, eating together. It's a good connection. And this has happened over over the years, over the thousands of years that our, our Confederacy has come together and, and reached out to others. The white roots of peace extend in all four directions. And anybody can follow those roots back to the tree, the great law of peace, the tree of peace. So, getting on to the Turo Wampum, uh, yeah, that's coming up, and we did take that journey down the river, and sometimes it was kind of scary because that river goes with the current. The water flows both, both ways. We were wondering, at some point, my nephew gave me a report back, and he says, the water's flowing uphill. Does that mean the treaty is over? <laughs> I said, I don't know, let's give that some time. Which, way, which direction did the sun come up with? <laughs> and look to the banks. Is the grass still green? So yes, I keep paddling. Them. Okay. <laughs> and then the current changed and they, they went downstream again. But we got to work with that when we travel that water. So it was a learning experience for all of us. And it's going to be again, and like Andy said, inviting people to join in. Um, as I was talking, a lot of you understand who we are, and maybe many of you don't. As I was explaining our Confederacy, the Haudenosaunee, what we call ourselves, we're named a lot of things over history. And I actually, we were even eliminated a couple of pages of our ourselves in some of the history. But with the help of Noon, they're getting our information out there to, to their neighbors, to their friends. And we have a whole bunch of different people of all different areas coming and acknowledging the work that Noon puts out there. And so we, we appreciate that. It seems like um, this man that was mentioned, uh, Lloyd Withers, he was another one that came to us wanting to help. Clan mothers looked, and looked at him and said, you know, what, what do you really want? We don't, we don't have white guys coming in our village telling us they want to give land back to us. <laughs> <laughs> he was sincere and he worked so hard and he got passed through the county legislation, legislatures to, um, to accept that and to give us some land back. Although well, it hasn't happened yet, and the piece they were talking about is on the banks of what you heard is one of the most polluted lakes in the country, one of the 10 most polluted lakes in the world, mm -hmm. with 
Karnema, Karnagaga, where the tree of peace was planted uh, a couple thousand years ago, and where our words to the newcomers to the forest, when we shared our great love of peace with them, took place on them banks also, and upstream to the village where we're at today. And what we shared with them, we translated it, and wrote it into what's today known as the Constitution of the United States. For the most part, they got their ideas from our unity. And we're thankful that they did, but as we heard earlier today, that they got a lot more work to do because they didn't get it all down. There's more that has to be rewritten on their part. But we'll educate them because we ain't going nowhere and they need the education. The treaty was made, and it was made at the beginning here, and it was made to last forever in our minds and with the minds of the people who were here that day making this treaty, it was also in their minds that it would last forever. As long as the sun shines in the east and sets in the west, for as long as the grass grows green, and for as long as the water flows downhill, this treaty of friendship will be in effect. And so that means it's still in effect today. And that's why India was suggesting not to make it a reenactment, but an act. To carry it on because it's still alive. It's been bruised up and tarnished and whipped on and such like that we know of, but it's still here, it's still alive, and so are we. And also, with this enactment word, it's not really an enactment, enactment, I can't even pronounce it. I'll blame that on the traffic. Of it. It's, a, it's alive and it needs to be well. So what we're reaching out for is a healing also. When we went to Washington to present our um, wampum belt that we got from the United States of America on the Treaty of 1794, which was the original belt also that we took to Washington that day that we have at home. Well, we're looking for the healing. It's not that complicated because it starts with respect and honor of our Mother Earth for all of us to survive, for all of us to carry on. That's where it starts. When we work together, we can bring that healing to our Mother so that we are all So it's just a start. It's already started. It's already moving. So look forward to uh, having more dialogue with all of you that are here and uh, carrying on this belt that's alive and needs to be well, as well as the Haudenosaunee's belt <coughs> is alive and well. Because we're not going anywhere, like I mentioned. We're not going anywhere as they thought we were. This new government made a policy that we would be assimilated within 30 years. It didn't happen. They extended it another 30. It didn't happen. It's still being extended, I guess. It's not going to happen. Because we can't have a treaty with ourselves. And we know that when we're children. government made us citizens, what would happen to our treaties? You can't have a treaty with yourself. And so in 1924, when the government did pass a bill or an 
Act of Congress of some some law they passed violating this, crossing over into our canoe with their laws, they violated the treaty because one of them agreements that we have that's still alive in this belt is that any laws, religions, customs, ways of life that you have in your ship are for your people in your ship. We travel down the river of life side by each, not to cross paths, not to put laws onto one other's vessel. What's in our canoe, our ways of life, our songs, our languages, our customs are for our people that are in our canoe. And we agree in order to maintain peace amongst our people to live side by each on the river of life that we won't pass laws on to your boat. <coughs> and you won't pass laws on to us in our canoe. And so these laws are in violation of the foundation of treaty making for the United States. This treaty is the foundation of all the rest of the treaties. So, it brings us into the Canadawa Treaty of 1794, which is alive and well also. Well, it's alive, it's still alive and in effect. But again, it needs to be well. So we need to work together with the United States people and make this movement to teach the American people what the United States government is not doing with its honor that it claims to have for, uh, for its land, for its agreements, for its treaties. We need to bring that to light and have this movement shake up the government, I guess to honor these treaties. Because we're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.